Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another cast and series in the Trash Can League. This is the round four game between Passy and Eternal Conscript, who I shall label as Risotto or Max. Probably Max. It's a bit easier. I think Eternal Conscript here is paying homage to his favourite player on the ladder. That is Eternal Major. And uh, Max, just every day he wakes up, he just says, I wish I could be as good as Eternal Major. And you know, he strives to achieve Age of Empires 3 perfection every sin ever since his first encounter with this uh, Eternal Major. And every day he pays homage by playing on this account. Game number one will be on Punjab. We have a Dutch versus USA matchup. We have Passy playing as Dutch, spawning to the color right in the right side of the map in the color red, with Max playing as the United States, spawning to the west of the map in the color blue. This is a matchup I think. I just think it's Dutch favoured. I think Dutch have more options. They have a nice strong timing attack. But if you're up against a very strong United States player who can turtle, turtle effectively, then <laughs> you, you're in for a rude awakening when you turn up to their base and see fortified outposts and forts everywhere. You're thinking, ah, I might have missed my opportunity. So I wonder if Max will go for that same similar uh, turtle strategy. I'm looking for Passy's uh, kind of micro here, economy macro in the first stage to see kind of what ideas he wants to go for for example here i've, I've noticed that he's scouted an 80 coin but he's going for a wood treasure but you need coin to you know train your vills and the more, less coin you can mine the more food you can gather so the faster you can age up in that sense and you can get the wooden transition I'm not saying 80 was a bad treasure just having to chop mine he's nearly mining the full 200 coin from the, the silver mine and that's that's kind of brutal that's, to be honest, that is kind of brutal, especially when there's a 20 XP, 20 coin treasure here. 80 coin, and then, yeah, there's, yeah maybe not the 55, maybe not the 55 food, but uh, for me, that's that's what I'm looking for in age one. As a, if I was uh, looking for a Dutch pair, I'm looking for coin treasures. I'm looking for ways I can kind of boost my food growth by getting coin treasures or just get, you know, food treasures in that sense. Just, just, just age one stuff. So we see Max going for a Chinese opening, it looks like. I haven't played much in the United States, but when I see three trading posts in age one, I see um, the Chinese immigrants, and I'm surprised we don't see this more often. It's always, it's, since this um, idea's come around, it's been super strong, but a lot of players have just kind of gone off it. Punjab is the most excellent map for this. Look, look, at, look at Max, he's out of wood. He's built a trading post. He sends the trading post wagon, and he's also called the trading post levy from the trading post. So he's got three TPs on a three TP map. He can't get a fourth for a long time, but neither can Passy. So Passy is like facing the three trading post uh, full contention on the line in age one, and there's nothing he can do about it. So really liking this card choice here from Max. He's following up with um, Capitalism, which is um, 1.65 coin, slightly buffed about... Um, 2.7, 2.75 bills and coin. It's um, nearly a three villager shipment. It's, it is good. And what that allows Max as well is that you know, instead of having to like, build a bank for four villager eco and spend all the resources in getting the bank or, send, or send the bank card for how much coin it is, you can just send that capitalism and get basically a slightly worse version of the card. You don't get the XP from the bank, but you don't need XP. You've got three trading posts. You get that extra shipment from all this XP you get in the first stage, and I'm looking at his deck. Irish immigrants. He's got another shipment ready to go. This is going to be sent in at 4 minutes and 21 seconds. The, the idea from Max for this build is very crisp. I'm very impressed. Although it's, it's such a simple build, I'm not, okay, I want to give him credit. I'm not, I'm not going to give him too much credit because it's pretty easy to do this. Um, picking the right map to do it on. Obviously, Punjab is an open is a map dictated by me all round four games will be played on Punjab. Um, but yeah, Patsy's like, what? I bet Patsy's thinking, well, great, what do I do now? What can I do now? And um, I too will be a bit perplexed at what you can do to counter uh, what Max has just done. Um, Grove Ritual moving forward, just scouting around. Yeah, both players having lots of scouting opportunities with their. Uh, Grove Rick Shaw, Max scouting the entire map with it as well, doing uh, really good awareness with this. Obviously, Passy with the Envoy, the Rick Shaw, and the, and the Explorer will also have a good lay of the land. He does see a lot. Doesn't see the um, doesn't see the 100 food treasure which spawns to the northern side. Yeah, there's 100 food. There's the 
65 coin, former Cax. There's another wood treasure up here as well, so decent treasures on the northern side. He sees market, he sees house. I wouldn't necessarily see a market if you're going for a FF build. We do see uh, Brazilian, no, Brazilian, Irish immigrants coming in at five minutes. Bam, there's a Fourville shipment coming in. Good timing there. He's got that perfectly, that timing perfectly nailed down. Um, looks like he's aged up with Philadelphia. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess it's Philadelphia because it says uh, Philadelphia Convention. Is this an age two play here from Max? Actually, you know, he's got the meeting house idea. He's got um, pen. He's got the convention. I think you can get access to early uh, dragoons from that tech. I, I'm probably very wrong on that sense, but uh, mid map barracks outpost. Batch of regulars being trained. Probably, I'd I'd probably rather see state militia. Um, get your seven hundred wood in. Get your stagecoach. Use this wood as well to fund. Uh, state militia and just try and get that going. You've just scouted your base. You've seen the in-base racks. I mean, five regulars, I guess it's fine. We could even just cancel those and just save those resources elsewhere and have them into state militia. It's an idea. It's, it's um, I'm not I'm not against that completing that batch. It's just, I think you would agree you're not going to be making any more regulars once you've seen what was going on. I mean, Passy, he's uh, feeling the pressure. He's gone for defensive racks. He's opened up uh, 700 would to be expected. He's got eight pikes. Being. Oh, they're already out. 700 wood into eight pikes. Third bank coming down. Um, Yeah, he's he's used the wood from the third bank essentially to get, I assume. No, it's not hunting dogs. He just basically had to use the wood to get extra housing. He's just gone for eight bank and only three banks behind. Well, okay. He's. um. Not down a bank, he's just basically bought an extra batch of woods to get another housing opportunity. Sent pikes in behind instead of the bank wagon, but out comes the state militia shipment, state militia batch. And yeah, the pikes and early scums having to run for this. And uh, yes, this is apparently already on the back foot, it seems. It's quite hard. What to do in this matchup, in this situation, I maybe just a four bank FF still kind of works. It's, it's, it's kind of slow. I uh, want to try and get like a Vet Hussar, Vet Skirm uh, push in, in to try and break this. The eight pikes maybe a bit early. Um, switch, switch between the pike, uh, the bank wagon and the pikes. But um, yeah, you've got to keep the pikemen alive. That's your, that's the crucial thing here from Passy. He does that very well, pulling the pikes back. Ten Skirms from that front line. St. Militia behind. Ah. Livion subscribing. Thank you very much as well. Pass is saying I panicked. He he saw a barracks and panicked. Obviously, you know, there's um very fast cavalry infantry coming from the barracks to send the pikes. But um yeah, the, so the other thing to note is on Punjab, it's the train line's quite short. It's still three TPs, but uh due to the obviously the uh, trading post nerf into fifth edition, each train post is about three point five villages max, maybe three point two, three point five. I I wouldn't rate them any more than that in terms of the income. So twenty four vills with four banks. We're looking at around about uh forty vill actually. Forty vill eco maybe thirty eight that area <clears throat> max with twenty four vills. He's only got three training posts. He does have the capitalism. Might have that church tech as well behind, or church for the coin truck when it doesn't have it just yet. So yeah, even on this situation, Max is still down in eco. Obviously, Patsy, probably a lack of uh, knowledge in United States, uh, lack of specific uh, matchup knowledge as well. Maybe assuming that he's on the back foot, but actually, it's uh, it still feels like it's um, uh, is Max having to kind of force the issue. I know Passy feels that like he's got to do something, but it's actually Max, you know, at this moment in time, I'm thinking, my eco's possibly a little bit down. I'd say having, you know, trained post getting your wood eco is still very strong. Uh, I'd like to see Max uh, making more use of his Minutemen um, for 150 food and coin. You know, having some veteran musketeer style units, 100 HP at a minimum, is still very strong. Uh, certainly worth, worth in including. So yes, the church XP is nice from the max point of view, but obviously he's got a card here. I, I can't remember which one it is. I want to say it's the yeah, Philadelphia Convention. There's a tech in there which basically grants you a four bill coin trickle again. It's a it's a nice little uh, bonus there. So it's um he has options, but he's sending coin. Looks like he wants to age up behind, which 
makes sense because he's, he's trading skirms with state militia and we, with a full-on wood eco from the trading line it's actually going to help him a little bit more it's actually cost him passing more to fight this and uh skirmish on state militia wars is not a matchup the skirmishers really want the, the state militia are just a little bit too strong uh, as a unit but also versus uh, skirmishers directly themselves but you know about Max, he's just going to try and age up here. If he can get the age up in, it's, he's only got the slow age up because he didn't age up in Virginia. He can try to get the three Gatling guns out and, um, yeah, Passy will have no answer to Gatling guns if he stays aged. Do you see the stable at the northern side here? So maybe Passy's got the idea of switching into Hussars. In comes infantry attack. Good card. Um, I, he's actually got a deck called the United States. I, maybe Passy was expecting this. Well, that's the thing. Passy was expecting the United States, but he was expecting a kind of like a boomy, uh, a fast industrial, very defensive United States. So he's missing 700 food. He's missing um, 700 coin, but I wouldn't say it's a crucial card. Um, he hasn't got three Hussars in his deck, but I wouldn't say that's a crucial card either. But he, you know, sending the infantry attack is because he's got nothing else to send. So it's, it's a good card, but at the moment you're thinking, geez, I wish I had either of my 700 crates uh, to, you know, to have. To have, to not have either is a is a you know, real blunder. But to have one is usually one or the other. Kind of macro round, it should be fine. But um, yeah, the couple of hussars here is actually now forcing Max really back. And actually saying to Max, yeah, I you cannot age yourself. And basically a prolonged age two war here, which yeah, both both villagers they, they, they've they've utilized their way to grow the economies. They can't really do anything else now. Maybe uh, Springfield Armory could just kind of help. Max in the long run, there's kind of a pseudo eco there. You've got the uh, Philadelphia Convention as well. He's got Tamani Festival for Cree CDB as well. So there's there's a game goes on his options, but uh, Max has got his Max has got his train posts on um wood, which you know is very nice, but it's not giving him that XP to get that eco growth that he may want. Passy, the only thing he can do now is train a fifth bank or build a fifth bank, and that's it. There's no other way for him to grow the eco. He's stuck at the moment. And yeah, without a uh, wood shipment, there's no real way you can afford uh, a fifth bank while making production. So yeah, the extra Hussar batch here from Max is actually going to put Passy under a bit of pressure here. A couple of hills forward, not ideal. Looks like Max has got his long rifles in. He's had them in for a, quite a while. I've, I've noticed he's been in for a while. But uh, Passy really needs to try and make uh, probably more use of that three range advantage between what he has and the um, St. Militia. Looks like the regulars are slowing down the state. Nope. Max is showing OP micro having regulars and state militias in separate groups there. Um, state militia though in defense mode actually. Uh, not too sure why. And it's going to be quite awkward now. They're back into. Is that actually stag? It's, I know it's a tactical mode indicator. Thanks for telling me it's a tactical mode. But I don't know what tactical mode it is. They look very huddled and grouped together. So surely that wasn't the volley mode there. I think they were in like a defensive mode otherwise before. But then back to normal. Um, orders now. Hussar's trading. It's just a hard skirm both sides. You can't really go pikes here because they get melted by the state militia. It's just both players spamming uh, Hussar and skirm units and again as, I, as the game goes on it's going to start to as the game goes on it's going to start to favour the United States but uh, so far both players really similar ecos. Passy did lose villagers on the hunt. No, I'm about to say, has he not been training villagers? But he's just losing the villagers on the hunt, not having his great coats, and um, gets him picked off there. It's a bit of a shame. No coin. He's stuck in the next stage. He's sending. Uh, yeah, he's sending Bank of Rotterdam because. Well, he's got nothing else to send, really. This is a tough situation for Passy. I do sympathise a little bit. You, you kind of build a deck custom. For a sieve, which do does one strat ninety percent of the time, but so when a surprise strat like this comes out, your deck is just not adequately equipped. This is a bit of a an oof situation. We do see Seminoles and Slimation moving in, all countered by cavalry. This is where a seven hundred food uh, would help you get a massive batch of cav uh, skirm out. Maybe another thing you could do is actually train a batch of five envoys to tank. That's 1,000 HP worth of civilian units, which don't get multipliers, you know, versus, you know, the 1.5 heavy infantry that the state militia have. They move in, they just be annoying, they kind of, they get close enough, they force the hand attack, and that's when you can use those as a tactical cheap meat shield here for the Hussars, and once they get to them, it'll be fine, but look, he's got 13 Hussars, this is a nice amount of Hussars to have. Minutemen would be very um, good here for 
Uh, Max Blair's got the Minutemen back in. Does have himself enough Hussars, 10 Hussars. So the Hussars basically trade off. It's just the, who's got the stronger ranged uh, advantage. We do see 27 State Militia with 14 attack. And we do see 26 uh, Skirmishers with 17 attacks. So again, it's... It's tough to, they're very close, it passes slightly ahead in the actual range damage. Uh, another batch of Hussars will go down pretty quickly. Just Passy just needs to keep on producing the Hussars. And basically, same for both players. The Seminoles here do very well, that's one thing I would say. They do have uh, 16 attack, so a slight bit more, but obviously they have double, double the rate of fire. So if they get in close and not move, that's when they would do. But they do suffer from the classic Archer. Uh, I have a bad setup animation problem. Okay, here we're talking about this is the Meeting House Pennsylvania pound. I think that's a fourville fourville coin trickle. So 37 bills plus capitalism plus Pennsylvania pound plus three TPs versus Passy 29 bills. Just the four banks here. And advanced arsenal coming in, but there's no way Passy can afford to build an arsenal. And um you just see see the score of a uh, United States player starting to take off. And it's one it's one of those like if Passy had a four bill card, you don't often put four bills in your deck, but if he had, it'd be like, oh, that's actually a really nice, this is like a really nice time to send it, or a really nice game to send it. Um, Tulip Speculation is not a good card, to be honest. Um, it's definitely worse than Factories and Refrigeration. It's, it's not, it still adds eco. It's I'm not going to say it's terrible in that sense. It does its job very well. It's, um, you just kind of need all your banks built like all seven banks built to make it really worthwhile and even then you have nine on the bank you have nine on the uh, uh, unique church as well and only then it, it just about provides 1.8 banks worth of eco which is much 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 less than a single factory so that card it's doesn't have to be in your deck it's not the greatest card uh h3 cards yeah there's absolutely a fine rack there um in a 1v1 i don't often have double bank cards in h1 because Quite often, you do like the church idea for the advanced church, for the bank, but also for the strand yachts and uh, red coats. Not red coats. Um, no, I don't what I forgot what they're called. You know what the musks um, options. But um, yeah, just just missing out on either four vills, seven hundred food, or three hussars is really hurts. Passes the ability to break this age two deadlock and push out, and. Um, I think I think here it's just not it's just not be afraid of the, the trading posts. If this was if this was high planes, it was five TPs. Then yes, I'd say be afraid. But just three TPs, it's it's tolerable amount. Um, it Maybe um, gone for a bit slightly more sit back build. But uh, Max just growing the army now of his significantly stronger economy. Ba full batches of state militia and hussars, with the ability to maybe drop down another production facility. Twenty nine state militia, nine minutemen now. So you need 9 minute men, 100 damage, but range veteran musketeer in terms of damage output from range is very decent. Uh, I don't think these guys are heavy infantry, they don't, they don't get destroyed by skirmishers, and the hussar is just enough to tank the skirmisher line here. And um, Max has been very, very cautious with his state militia, to be, that is, to be fair. He's got 31, each of these now 145 HP, just slightly more than the skirmishers with their double cards. But the Hussars coming in. I think that was another batch of Hussars being trained. I think this final batch of Hussars here is going to be a bit too much here for uh, Passy. You've got a final defensive batch of Hussars. I don't think Minutemen has been called yet for the town centre here from Passy. Envoys is a, another opportunity for him uh, to call as well. Called in CM actually for uh, uh, you know lots of units, but it's, most of his villagers are idle in the town centre or idle out on the map, just chilling. Can't really get the resources for a big batch of minutes. And the problem is with State Militia. With big batch of minutes, they can just run. GG's been called. And Rosario's actually taking game number one and winning the USA versus Dutch matchup. So, a bit of a surprise result. I, it surprises that I've, I'm surprised how the game panned out, the strategies, how it developed. But um, it just shows that uh, Dutch, if they get forced into H2, it just gets awkward quite quickly. Um, yes, the same militia do need a nerf. I would agree with that. But... I think with the United States, it's like, okay, you have a strong unit, but you have a slow eco. But you have three Gatlins, but you don't really have any good anti-cav. Like, there's pluses and there's negatives. I, I, I'm all for strong cards, strong units, as long as they don't break the game, as long as there's kind of give, give a bit here, take a little bit here. 
as long as there's clear kind of like weaknesses for example with the new series it's like in age two they have dragoons they have musketeers they have uh, coyotes they have is there a skirmisher unit for Ethiopian age two um what's their final no it's just a skirmisher in tenure but they, they have coyote musketeer dragoon and then all the units from the watchtowers they got all these units like they have no they have no lack of coverage i think is what the african civs are really op at. They, they have a unit for every situation and every matchup and um yeah we'll see dutch here not having access to musketeers skirm and hussar is very nice but no cavalry upgrades in the second age so it's like kind of forcing into the skirm play but uh versus a, a state militia it's um it doesn't quite work out on paper but um yeah well played there from max good eco i think we'll see it in the graphs how the eco's here for both players oh i'm gonna guess the crate eco from dutch obviously will take him a high above the usa and he'll be going away but as the game goes on that difference will convert so yeah the crate eco the rate of increase of resources here is greater for the dutch player and this was his time to age up around eight minutes uh 10 10 um, semi get units out hold position force the response there from the united states and then age up behind but as the game goes on to 30 minutes both players have the same ecos it's getting a bit tough now passy still can't get his fifth bank who doesn't look woods and then just all the shipments for the united states have to increase the economy just come in and the ecos just get closer and closer and the economy the rate of income for the united states always increasing and diverging from the uh, dutch player so Although, in the end, you could say Dutch still have more resources. If they've spent all their resources at this moment in time, it's the rate of increased line is what is different. And that's going to, you can see that in the military population and how the armies start to grow apart. You know, good trades. Like early on, it's like Dutch and slightly larger army getting good trades. And then it's even Stevens. And then as it ends, just USA starting to get more units. And just Dutch eventually get broken by the amount of units that the United States have. So. Yeah. Siri Ito, what is the TCL? It's the Trash Can League. The league for trash players like me, like Passy, like Rosado. Okay, we're not trash. We're about 1,700 ELO. Six, okay, between between 1,550 on a bad day to 1,750 on the, uh, maybe on the high, on a high day, 1,800 possibly touching, but no higher than that, really. But it's, it's been good. All the games so far are nice and close. And even that was a real close game. I enjoyed that one. See a new strategy. Then, you know, classic Lionheart. Welcome to Tower Defense Simulator. Oh, the villagers here from okay. Th this this is not this is not what we needed. One, two, three, four. Missaville there. Five. Missaville there. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Missaville there. Ten. Two. Maybe there. Eleven. Oh, you, you, you could see. I mean, it's just it's the losing. Okay, I don't, I don't mind the IOTC. Obviously, the losing villas there with no great coats. Not ideal, but um. Yeah, get, try to take great coats and Dutch. It, it's tough. It, I, I know you pass it. It's tough. It really is to find a time to do it. But I forgive you. We'll move on to the next game. I guess the series is over. Absolutely no chance. Every series is a play or three game series. So there's another two games to go tonight. Passive versus Rosado. Game two, let's do it. Um, Rosado is a nice dish, actually. But I do... I do commit a crime against humanity, which, as a British person, I'm a little bit like, okay, forgive me. But if I was Italian, oh, I'd, I'd get absolutely murdered for this one. On a nice sausage risotto. Wait for it. I do add tomato sauce to it. I don't gasp all you like. I know. But the tomato sauce, for me, adds an extra dimension of flavour and kind of viscous to the plate. And uh, yeah, I think complements it quite well, even though Italians may think I've just committed a crime against humanity. Bramhoke, is the series over? I guess the series is over from the previous one. Ah, good. Is the rest worth watching? But Bram is always worth watching. Uh, stay here with me. You can always watch it back at a later point. You can also go onto YouTube and watch it later on. And even, yeah, Max saying, oh, gross. Chris, a big kiss saying, that sounds disgusting. Boys, what can I say? The Brie Brits, we put tomato sauce on everything. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a tomato sauce on a roast dinner, but I, you know, I could put tomato sauce on a um, English breakfast. You know, bacon, hash browns, sausages, eggs, toast, that kind of stuff. It just kind of helps, um, kind of 
um, make it a little bit less dry sometimes with traditional breakfast. Right, this matchup here on the Great Plains, this is Bass's home map. He's chosen to play the Great Plains. Usually he's been playing, um, what is it, not Florida Coast, Pepper Coast as his home map as the British, but he's chosen this map as his home map. Uh, Max here playing as the Indian Civilization. He won the last game, he chose to pick his Civilization first. He's gone for the Indians. Pass is counterpicked here with the Germans. Mark it, age one, lovely stuff. A lot of beaver treasures on the side of the map. I hope this is past his home map, because otherwise he's misread the rules once again and seems to be the only person who can understand how the home map system works. So, uh, Passy, if you're in the chat, this is the time to fess up, because I know this is not your home map, you lying little um, sod. I, <laughs> you, it was never your intention to play Great Plains. I'm surely not. It might have been. It might be, actually. Um, it's still a very good map for British as well, so Brit, Germans... Passy plays both, so it does give him options in that sense. What I like about the Germans on this map, it's safe defensive trading post, it's double coin mining base, there's a lot of beaver treasures around, you have the starting market as well, so you know it, it helps. The fact is like Max is on 118 coin, he's got the market down at this moment in time. Please, please, please mine seven more coin, just seven. For seven more coin, you could buy yourself a villager in India. There you go. A villager costs seven coin. Who would have thought? <laughs> but yeah, literally, yeah. If you if you go on early market and you're on Great Plains, make good use of the coin treasures because they can help you get that wood to needed. So 13 vills. He wants to try and get a 14 vill. He's queuing in, and um, yeah, he's gonna probably pull off and get the aggro down. Is he gonna go in base? In oh, Max in base Taj Mahal into cavalry. Age two, spicy. Liking that interesting idea versus Germany to counter out their uh, H2 Ulans. We'll see how that develops. I assume we're going to open up stable into um, a couple of Zambraks early on. But yes, this coin, I guess now the coin you can argue to be used for upgrades like uh, civil servants, hunting eagles, professional hunters in the next age. But uh, still, it could be another wood here for a house or. Well, you're not, you're not sure on housing population here. Sometimes like, the house is a bit of an issue if you're going for the agriforts kind of build up. But uh, also, you can just have buy another batch of wood, get another vill, and just have less villagers on the wood in transition. Some uh, ideas for consideration. Uh, some people here saying that the matchup is German favour. I've, I've heard people say it before, even Wicked, Wicked Cossacks Guide on ESOC web, uh, Community Web, the Beginner's Guide to the Indian Elephant basically says uh, German is a very tough matchup. He does say kind of delayed sepoy rush is probably um, not a great bet versus um, German players as well. And also going for 10-10s has its own issues. Um, I think just flat out a, a, a strong semi-FF sieve in Germany is a perfect counter to India. They, they have enough tools. Yeah, so, so Germans here, they have enough tools to hold on in second age. They have crossbows, they have minutemen, they have Ulans with the shipments as well to snare. Six villager eco. They don't, they're not scared of the sepoy rush. Obviously, sepoys only have 180 HP as well. So they're not worried in age two these days versus India. I and mean, when they do go up to the fortress age, they hit, they hit hard. And that's what India struggles is the kind of, it takes, it takes some time to get them settled in the third age. Passy's seen this. He's like, what earth is this? I've never seen this. What does this do? Passy is saying, Max, what's going on? I've got no idea. Why Why do you play non-standard versus me? I'm a bot. I can only play standard. Please give me standard things to, uh, so I can read. And um, yeah, Max is just running around circles in Passy's mind. Max is literally in Passy's mind. And Passy is just now being tilted from the inside out. Well, I'm sure somebody will take this, uh, set the tre treasure in the middle of the map at a later point once there's Ulans on the map. For example, passing it here, agent up here. We've got three Ulans down. This is a real delayed stable, to be honest. Like, um, it doesn't take that long to, for your uh, for a set of wagon or two to gather the wood for the stable. So, actually, it'll take a long time before your next batch of Ulans is coming out. Feeling here that um, okay, he does have a couple of Ulans being trained, but maybe maybe not idea, but he just doesn't train anything here actually behind. I'm still not seeing any buildings coming down here from Max. This is just a straight FF. No. 
Who needs jacket? <laughs> yeah, I know Azank used to make um, deck names for me as well. You do need your great coach, especially versus Germany. But uh, if you're agent fast, you've got double Zam cards. Double Zam, double Mahu, one Gurkha. No intervention, no refrigeration, no 1,000 gold. Um, which is a bit of a, bit of a bit questionable because you've used the Taj Mahal to age to age two, so you don't have a coin crate age up like the Taj Mahal to age three. Um, so you're me present. Uh, two siege elephants versus Germans is also. I mean, I, you put down the you put down a deck for every single Civ matchup, but uh, versus Germans in particular, not often you be making good use of these two siege elephants. But I suppose it's nice to have that kind of. Flexibility, just in case. Uh, one, one Ulan Vil going down in the front. One Ulan going down. The villager going in the back. Three villagers on the coin mine. Sentry's being called, but it's such a slow pull back down from the villagers. These guys not in their great coats. Well, who needs a great jacket? Looks like you need a great jacket. You've lost yourself four to five Vils there for the exchange of maybe three Ulans. That's such a great trade for Passy and and just. That a little bit of idle time, a little bit of presence, forcing the Minutemen as well. You just you wish you had the extra food to get the age up in queue. And yeah, the German semi-FF is just feels being a strong position here. Looking at Mpassi's micro as well. He's going three vils, 700 coin, not even going 700 wood. Going for like a fast FF here with a couple units being trained. Yeah, interesting idea. Yeah, I, I'm... Aging up, is that going to be 700 wooden transition or 1,000 wood on the age up? It's going to be uh, one of the situations. And yeah, the age up's going to come in here from Passy before uh, Max is. And more Vils under pressure. And another Vil goes down. Who needs their great coats? India needs their great coats. No. So, so okay. here's the other thing as well. Sometimes a defensive aggro. People might say aggro is offensive. Harrison's still got the deck name joke. It, if it's if it's not jacket is in terms of villager HP, then what is it? Who needs jacket? Explain to me what's going on, Max. I think you had the same deck name before last time as well. I is the green oh, the green jackets. Uh, that's, not, that's, that's crap. That's not even a joke. What the? I'm I'm, I'm hyping this up as in like okay, he's, he's red me. He likes to play to my great coats and. Who needs Royal Green Jackets? I don't think Royal Green Jackets features in many decks. And to be honest, like, okay, Count Infantry Rifling is important, but it's a, it's a, it's a card. Like, it's it's it feels quite, it feels like a bad value card. Like, it's just 400 resources in the arsenal for every other sieve, but you have to send a card just to get Count Infantry Rifling. Now anyway, you you go for the Agra for for the um, Age up here, which you've done before for the. Uh, the five Gurkhas, the uh, defensive nature of building of it. It's, yeah, it's a pretty decent age up in that sense. But um, the H2 Agora allows you to go greedy, no units, because you have this massive fort covering all your villagers. It's a garrison point as well. You had a few villagers um, you know, on the mines and hunts back here. But, for example, if the Agora fort was built here in age 2 you've got the villagers on these hunts here, the mine getting into the Agora fort or into the town centre. So... Well, if they're this side, you're going, oh, I'm blocking to your town center, you go, no problem. Hello. Run into the Agra Fort and allows you to play in that sense. I know, obviously, you went for the coin from the Taj Mahal. Um, well, could have caught ceasefire, to be honest. Could have caught ceasefire and kept those bills alive. That is what the Taj Mahal is there for. And, um, yeah, maybe, maybe. You, you, you do have the Wonder UI um, on. It does give you, like, a big image either here or just there. Uh, you can hotkey it as well, so it might be like a panic. Oh shit, I'm going to have my ho panic hotkey on F9. Just press it and just instantly it's like, phew, I've got 15 seconds to react here. Anyway, Passy in that Fortress Sage, his first card, 8 skirms, just going straight into shipments, not messing about with 1k um, wood. I like it. The skirms are putting pressure here. Redcoats do come out. These are now upgraded to uh, Royal Veteran status. Five Gurkhas as well from Town Center. Should be enough to actually push. Passy back just slightly, force him into making more skirmishes behind this. We do see a couple skirms reinforcing. Not great batch here. Maybe because Passy's having to, you know, chop a lot as well. The villagers juice the coin. So actually, he's going for this quicker tempo. And he's actually 
Let's see what Pax is trying to do. He's trying to exchange units here. He, he wants to keep his military population low. So that way he doesn't have to build so many houses. I know it sounds weird, but actually the fact he's losing units and trading them off means when he does send nine Urlands, he's not housed. He can still train units behind it. He, he can then still send shipments behind it afterwards. He can keep this progression pushing forwards and this momentum that Patsy has got at the moment. He's got the score lead. He's got Max on the back foot. Max is sending nine Zams. So yeah, that is that is working. He's actually defended this early push quite well. Still on 19 villagers though, not ideal. But um, Passy with another batch of skirms being trained, nine will land in the field. These are only colonial Zamraks as well, so you've got to be careful. You've got to remember that they are pretty pretty flimsy. They're not sh super strong. And uh, eight skirms should easily one-hit kill a Zambarak. And yeah, and there's another batch of Zams, uh, skirms. So 13 skirms. The Zam's going to move in, trying to find these Ulans. It's going to run straight into the Vils. Obviously, um, Passy having his great coats because he's an amazing player. Obviously, look at, look at that round. 202 HP. Passy with the most amazing awareness to get his grit coats. Uh, he doesn't need it this game because he's, he's the one being aggressive. <laughs> Gator in the chat taunting Passy, saying, How did he manage to delete all those Ulans? And well, I think I want to say the veteran Ulan yeah, was in for that first push, but I uh, just trained him off. I did see you know, all the red coats gone down, the village account still low. Uh, probably rifle minutemen were called tanking town center agra forcing a lot of our time and yeah the fact you get another more nine veterans on the field it's fine i, I think it's fine hey uh, max here with a yurumi shipment coming in kind of try and time it with the uh Zambrax on the field running around nice nice kind of competition here to do with you know skirm Ulan actually you got the zams to do with the Ulans and uh yuri to do with the skirmishers but um Unless you actually make contact with the um, infantry line, it's not going to be effective because uh, Ulans have a great time versus a Yumi. They, they enjoy cutting them down, and there's just not enough Zams here to do the damage required versus the amount of vet Ulans Passy should have in the field. Now, this is a, this is another player here, like like Sheckler, like into mass war wagons versus age three India. I just can't quite see it just yet. You just you know that India's cavalry options is. is it's not great. They do have Mahouts, very tanky cavalry, but they have range resist as well, and quite strong range resist. Just Ulans on top. Um, Indians, they want to try and get a Gurkha count going. It's quite tough for them here. Um, I like having a, yeah, a couple war wagons. Makes sense. But I, I would like to see Passy now restarting productions into yeah. Ulans behind this and not kind of try and go for the kind of like skirm war wagon composition. Because the war wagons quite often will just sit around going, oh, I don't really want to engage a block of um, block of uh, Gurkhas. The other thing this uh, age up combination does, the Delhi Gate is stronger, 37 attacks, so that's why you know Quasi units are going down quite quickly. It's a strong, strong tower, but there's no Mansabdar um, Gurkha from the Charmanar Gate. There's no Mahout from the Charmanar Gate. There's no um, 800 wood and inspiration from the Tower of Victory. There's there's a few things you're missing which really help your age three compared to you know a boosted uh, outpost to be honest two Ulan raid top side we'll get another vill uh, but zambrax here will uh, intercept and pick off the Ulans, but it actually takes a long time to kill two uh, two Ulans. it's the fact that two Ulans can kill a villager before yeah a whole you know squadron of anti-cavalry here eight zambrax can actually even kill another villager going down on the coin mine and um max going back to the original coin mine um, house is here, a bit of an awkward position blocking pathway from the town center to the coin mine. Obviously, we'd prefer the one house to be chucked there, another house being chucked there instead. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the delayed age up there from the H2 pressure from the islands have really turned this um, match up on its head. I, I don't, I don't think. I mean, tactically, what Max has done has been wrong. I think he's, he's, he's played this game with a nice idea. I like. I like the idea of what he's uh, doing, as in it's like, different. I, have, I don't know enough to kind of critically evaluate if this is the right way to go about it or not. I know that people say that the India-German matchup is very German favoured, so I, I appreciate what you're doing about it. The ceasefire, the ceasefire could have won the game here for uh, Max if he called it to keep his villagers alive. Taj Mahal, that's what his main primary use is for. And it's not a sign of weakness; it's a sign of amazement. Uh, Bremhook saying no at ACY, no, not this series, but I think the next series which I'll cast um, probably 
not announced because we we um, get in a little bit late on the regular school nights for me to start another series because you know who knows game three between these two players could go on for another th- five hours you never know um but I, th- I think azy is coming in and i've got a series to look and kind of explore how azy work and uh, if it's really good i might um ask players to uh, play with the mod and see if we can incorporate that for the second half of the trash can league and you know big shout outs to AZ. like that's what he's done again is no no mean feat. Um, I just wish there was more people here to kind of enjoy his his work and content as a result. That's that's the only thing. It's like a it, you know it, it could be a nice way to actually re- revitalize the scene it, it, if it's that good and works that well. Then you know, it's a possibility. Live casting is a possibility. I've been a bit busy recently to do live casting, but uh, uh, my ability to play back speeds. Are, Recorded games at a decent speed it actually works quite well. And I think it works to my advantage in this like um, nice league format that players can play their games whenever. There's always league action going on um, between nine players every week. There's always going to be uh, four or five matchups scheduled you know, per round, but you know you play more than one round per week. Anyway, a couple of engagements here. Skim's picking up a couple of of skirmishers, but the Jaeger's being called here for Germany. He is do- going to be leading the skirm fight. Seize fire's being caught, and Max is going to charge his moose uh, straight into it. But I think the um, Ulans will get out of the way. The Warp Wagons will find a way behind, but actually the uh, moose were faster still now than the slower skirm. So actually, we get a good path in here on the moose on top of the. Uh, skirmishers, but there's enough war wagons here to uh, right click these mahouts as they come in, and a bit of you know, a bit of awkward path here from the mahouts here. Ceasefire has ended, and the fighting may resume. But mahouts have been basically surrounded by Erlans. The infantry army have just bugged out in the trees, and yeah, quick resign straight after. I, I understand the resignation there, and obviously, ceasefire slowing your own units down really makes that a bit difficult as an offensive tool in these days. I fully understand the resignation there, and um, yeah, GG going to pass it is one all. After two games. Yeah. If we look at the... Uh, I think it's, if the Ville count... Is, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal, I know, but it's a learning point. The Ville population here for India is not br- brilliant. 21 going down to 18, but it's the idle time as well. This is... You know, you're hoping for Ville production going through, and that's just the presence of cavalry being raided in age 2 and why German MFF is strong. You, you've got to respect... The fact that German will have cavalry out in the field, and you've got to have a plan to deal with it. And I think that's where the kind of defensive in base agra with the fort, with the extra garrison point, with the you know, shooting the two sepoys, the potential to train another three or four sepoys. Don't need to go too too much, too much helps you there. But, um, yeah, the, the matchup I've I've heard is is poor from India's point of view. And not to go along with this, um, Ville graph as well, if we look at the idle villages as well, would be, um, yeah, a bit tough in the early, you know, middle colonial parts as well. So you can see how, in moments in time, like the, basically the full villagers were you know, in the town centre. So you can't be really helped. But so yeah, Passy playing, you know, with the counter pick option. That's why we had the counter pick, you know, to encourage more two one series instead of you know straight three nil clean sweeps. Passy got the Sith pick right here. He got the strategy right here, and he had the. He had a very good execution of what he wanted to do as well. So you sometimes you could say, is it the matchup or can you just give the give the credit to the player? And I think today I want to give the credit to Passy for a well executed game there. Semi FF, it's back, baby, it's back. Never left. Still the dominant way to play. Germans. Right, let's move into the next game recorded game TCL and uh, Passy Rosano. Game three, let's do it. Right. Oh, I love how instantaneous use of the explorer, crack shot in the wood treasure, and moving on elsewhere. Right. You, okay, you know what? I think Passy's home map was actually great planes. I think Passy's actually got the map rules correctly, so as a uh, give plaudits where it was, and yeah, because you know, Great Plains is good for both Germans and Brits. But um, we're on Siberia here, a decent map for British. But um, I'm seeing this Swedish pick here from Max, and it makes it just makes all the sense to play Sweden and Siberia. Uh, this coin mine's a little bit awkward, but starting with a defensive trading po- uh, tower, okay, it is on the coin mine, it's a bit awkward, but um, Sweden at the moment 
uh, to struggle versus kind of H2 early aggression. Very wide map here to get, you know, coin mine, you know, you're kind of um, not coin mines, your own torps out on the side, torp, nice back, two back coin mines to torp, uh, coin mine in base of torp uh, on the side. Lots of torp opportunities. Also, the tree lines are quite dense, it feels like. A single torp here would be nice. A torp here would be nice as well. I, I, I encourage torpin um, trees as well. I think. I think there was, there was a time when Torpin Trees was like the meta, and then it went out of meta. I think Torpin Trees is now going to come back into meta a little bit with the Swedes. It'll be interesting to see how, how it develops. Um, early train post here, so Max going to choose to go for the TP1 Torp instead of double Torp. And I, I just I just feel... I just feel like... Um, uh, what was it? No, wait, can I actually move that? I'll have to check that another time. Um, I just feel that the extra um, trading post just intuitively feels better. Uh, excuse me, Max. Early blueberries? Early blueberries? Surely you meant three vills. That must be a mistake. Oh, like, if this is just... I'd be happy for a rehost if this was a mistake. Like, this is... Uh, Max, is, is this a mistake? Yeah, it's a mistake. Oh. Even then, that's harsh. That, like losing your losing your early villager, like, your experience advantage there from going for the early trading post just to then send your villagers in at normal XP time. Uh, I, I feel mostly I'm you know, I'm not always there as a tournament host, but I feel if I feel, I like to think that the players in this league, if somebody said actually, hey, can I re? Because I've you know I queued the wrong ship. And I, I feel that Patsy is good enough egg to say, you know what, you're a doofus, you messed up big time, but sure, go for it. Let's do it again. Um, but it's okay. He's recovered. Three has been sent. And uh, it's, it's a good opportunity to see his deck and see how he wants to play this. Um, so he's got his, uh, or maybe not, deck. I'm sure there's a joke with it, but I wouldn't know. Uh, you've got Dominion's Double Wood Crates. Uh, obviously, uh, Blueberries, Engelberg, Ironworks as well. And the two level cannons. Musket HP is a pretty decent card there. Third Age Hacker Polites. Uh, 1k Wood makes a presence. Uh, double Carolian Upgrade. Falcon Nets, Jaegers. No refrigeration, but copper mines times like three. And then in the fourth page, the standard rack of the five GG cards, including heavies, two factories, Svey Lifeguard, and the Mamelukes. Sweden now versus British Bad. It is. It's, it's not a good matchup. And as Passy won the last game, he's chosen the Brits first. And Max Counter picking with the Swedes. It. It just feels a bit awkward because it's it, the thing with this matchup. It's one. Of, it's like the Britain mirror. It encourages both players to go into musketeers, and especially with the Carolian like bonus versus cavalry from range. It, the British player can't really go cavalry. They also want musketeers to do the siege versus the torp. So you know, the Brit player is incentivized to go pure muskets here. And from the Swedish player, yes, that allows you to go Carolians and then a couple of lever cannons to defend and maybe uh, artillery foundry later in H two for the lever cannon spam. It's a possibility, but to, to kind of counter the early mass of musketeers, it feels like you 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 yourself need to go musketeers, and you can't drop a saloon on this map. The, the, the saloon units from Asian maps are the Woku Rodins, Roku um, Horse Archers. They're just not good, especially versus musket style units. So you can't do that. A sneaky villager here from Passy. Where's he off to? Is he gonna try like Manor House? This um. Silver mines to try and get control of it. It'd be quite sneaky if he does. See Max in transition. All his um, wood gatherers on the top. Um, Manor House coming down. Oh, Manor House on the Queen Mine. Passy, Passy, Passy. I've not even got my hands in like an Italian, like just like just just, just the, the passive aggressive. Like they're annoyed at something. A perfect opportunity just to deny a top by putting it on the Queen Mine and being uh, annoying in that sense. Uh, a couple, honestly, a couple um, wall placements here wouldn't go too far amiss, but you've also got the forward villagers here. I think from Passy's point of view, the age up's coming in. He's aged up here with... Did he age up here with 500 food? I think he's aged up with the food. He's got a decent food count already. I don't see a forward comp post marching across. I don't see the coin crates at all. So he aged up with the, the uh, Philosopher's Prince. Card order 3 build Virginia Company. Aged up with the stuff. Opened up the standard H1 trading post here. Ford barracks next to the two torps and 
this is nice. Like, as soon as the musketeers come out, they've got a target to siege while they're waiting for reinforcements. It's a nice angle as well because it puts pressure on this top mine, this mine, but it does allow the Swedish player to basically top this comfortably. This is be very, very heavily topped, it feels like. And down here, it's going to be good. I love this play, though, from passing. This deserves credit. It's not that he needs to block off all the coin mines. He just needs to block off the coin mine, which is most likely for the Swedish player to kind of push around it in this anti-clockwise formation. So I, I like... It's also the spacing. Like, it's... um. You can put one top there, maybe one, two. It'd be quite awkward, but it's under pure vision. It can be dealt with. Um, a couple... You can make walls as well, but obviously manor houses just increase your in villager population as well, so it doesn't really matter. Both, both do the same job. Hey, right, 700 coin coming here from Passy. This is interesting. His card order, um, 700 woods into 700 coin. No five bills, just going pure aggressive here. He's got the staple down on top. I don't... Okay, I liked everything until Passy showing the stable to Max. This is, for me, this is a bit of a blunder. I, I think with a single Rax, Passy, Max could be guessing, okay, is he just going to be um, a bit, bit light aggression, break the torps? He's going to go full on H2, and he's a second Rax elsewhere. But the Hussars is just allowing Max to go, right, I'm going to go to pure Carolyn defense. I, I'm, I suppose you'd do that with every game anyway, but. It's going to encourage him to go second racks instead of wanting to send it, say, leather cannons. I guess he can. I guess I guess it doesn't really matter that Max sees the stable. I guess what it shows to Max is that Passy is not thinking of aging up to the fortress age for like a kind of like a musketeer, falconet, timing, must combat, that kind of idea. So that gives Max a little bit of valuable scouting information. Passy does see the villager moving across here from um, Max. So he does see that this yes. is on for a bit of a, a walk down here. And yeah, Max is going to try and top. He can still get top down. And that's probably what's going to be... That's probably what's going to annoy Passy the most is that a top will still be dropped because this wasn't ward or this wasn't ward. Um, villagers punching each other, though. This is going to be quite messy. Um, quite hard to get into the melee. Just get the explorer just purely in the melee mode, just chasing. But Hussar is going to move down to the southern side of the map to try and put pressure on the villagers down here and just stop this top expansion. But the Hussars can't charge in head first to Carolines though, because the range, the range multiplier is just going to do decent damage. And the Hussars are having to retreat out of here. That being said, though, once the Hussars are into combat versus Carolines, a you know, high base attack of 20 in melee. It's like it's like a musketeer with two multiplier versus Hussars. They don't do terrible versus cavalry in melee mode. They're not ideal. But um, you just see the pressure that Passy has put on the villagers. Max into the town centre. And yes, an early artillery foundry here from Max. He's sent... Oh, wow. He sent two lever cannons himself. I don't think he needs all five lever cannons, but he certainly is going to win and dominate the musketeer war at the moment. Making good use of that early uh, trading post for the extra experience as well. Southern side of musketeers putting pressure back onto the ironworks. But uh, with five lever cannons, I think Max, Max wants to make the most of this. He wants to be aggressive because... He's pretty down in economy for the time being. 25 with uh, 11 torps, 12 torps versus a 40 vil eco here from Passy with good upgrades. Um, Musk attack coming in, but also we'll have like steel traps, place of mines. Yeah, place of mines confirmed. Actually, the thing is with uh, Max, you've got to be careful. He hasn't sent, he's sent blueberries in now on 12 torps, so his food eco is going to be growing. It's going to be there some at some level. Just needs to really get a second barracks down to get them Carolians rolling. He's just like all this food he's got stacked up. But this, he doesn't want any more. He doesn't really want any more um, leather cans. Like five's enough to do with all infantry. They're not siege units. They're pretty poor sieging. So he's actually forced himself to call Minutemen onto the Sars in base. Actually, to protect his village. A couple of Carolians coming out. I'm surprised about his raid here from Passy, actually. Uh, I don't think. A uh, single bill went down. Maybe one bill and uh, Max went down. But it's, um, he's was maybe calling Pikeman here just to try and defend his leather cannons. Massive raid, though. These villagers over here. Um, Passy's just come across the treasure mine. Um, they do have their great coats. Only one going down before the Carolians and Minutemen coming across. Actually, a villager getting punched down here by one of the villagers. There's so much HP being shared among all these uh, settlers. Only one villager goes down. That's a huge, huge uh, save there from Max. That's really impressive. 
Uh, meanwhile, the forward base here from Hassi is going down. He is cleaning up the torps on the left hand side of the map, which is very, very nice. But he's lost uh, a good four hussars there, maybe three just for the one villager. Um, he might move him back there to see if they've gone back to the same location. But so you can just see the kind of like. It's just been a little bit of a. Um, yeah, a little bit of a messy game here, actually. Maybe uh, Max is. Maybe Passy's trying to age. Yeah, Passy's moved back and aging behind. He's only got himself, though. To... Oh, they're down here. Uh, 28 Musketeers. Most of the Musketeers are at home anyway, which. Yeah, I would have liked them, you know, at least maybe sitting in this position, ready to intercept and help these uh, small battery units here, sieging the uh, top. But. Uh, Torp count from Max is, is low. It's going to be increasing again. He's up to 11 torps. Um, yeah, he's he sent... Has he sent Dominions? I don't think he has... Yeah, he has sent, he has sent Dominions, yeah. So he's, he's used that to get his early batch of torps up. But, uh, he's still got another wood shipment to go. It's, it's a shame that he sent uh, 700 wood, Dominions, and Engelberg blueberries, but just, just only has 110 torp population. Just old Sweden would have so much more population at this moment in time because they're going to have more villages on the wood chopping because the torps gather more food and more coin um sweden that's really hitting and this massive units here from max is just not the it's a decent size and lever counts here to push their muskets and he's, he's certainly bought the time that the musket is not in, not interested in attacking but we've got hussar raids both sides which you know hussars are utilizing their mobility max does age up first with the exile prince age up which helps him you know to get that tempo advantage but Passy behind agent just as now. So you, you, actually, the fact that Passy's age up so close to Sweden, it's only agent with a slow age up, getting the extra town centre wagon on age up, not looking for the uh, longbows, which I think in this guy kind of must hostile composition. That's actually a real, just, that's a really nice idea. I like that. It's a, it's a long seven longbows here. Oh, pardon me. Just continuous talking must be must be out of energy. Not, not that this is a boring game. Certainly far from it. The extra longbows there probably don't offer too much offensively versus Sweden, especially versus you know the cannon spam, the potential Carolian uh, kind of melee charge that they present. Veteran Carolian has been researched five. I want to go to Max's side first. He's got the two Falks out being sent. Going to go for a Musk, Musk Carolian time push here, but Passy here with the. Three Thalks being trained. Could have gone for a fourth. Has gone for a fourth. He's got six Falconets out on the field. All his villagers were basically on the coin mine doing the classic giving anxiety Falconet switch. Only achieving six instead of seven. So it's just going to be six Falconet's opponent. Why I would say he's got to be careful of is to not overkill a leather cannon. Really kind of micro your, your Falconets here because what you don't want to do is have all your Falconets target leather cannon. Because they are grouped with falconets, and well, I mean, because the falconets are grouped with eleven cans more accurately is the correct way to phrase this. These units are quite spread out, so there's not much splash damage going on between these units. So if they all shoot one falconet here, that falconet will survive. That eleven can, eleven cans will survive as well. You see how they're moving? They just take, they, they kind of spread out and take a wide formation, and that's going to help Max defensively versus this. Uh, Falconet push, but Passy is about to do himself. Nine Musketeers hitting the field. Where are the rest of the Musketeers? It's white on a snowy map. I can't see where his mass. Oh, there they are. Uh, underneath the Explorer's Triangle. Yeah, it's quite tough to see, but uh, the game's up. Max knows what Passy is up to. Passy, another three Falconets. Why no Culver Rings? We've already got enough Falconets to blow back any amounts of infantry on the map. Jaegers is not a problem. And oh, Max is unpacking at the wrong time. The unpacking Passy split, split. Yep, two on one. Is this out of the range? Oh, three pickups here for Passy. And um, the town centre is just buying time. It's buying line of sight. And uh, these lever cannons there. Uh, is Max going to go for the lever cannon shot upgrade? No, he's not. No grape shot. No, as it lever gun carriages? I think it's called. So no guard uh, lever cannons in the fortress age. And these uh, Falconets are at the moment uncontested. Two Colfrins finally been trained from a second artillery foundry. Has Max forgot the first artillery foundry? Big volleys there on top of the villagers and uh, lever cannons. I think it was just the lever cannon and maybe one villager going down, actually. Um, it looked worse than it was. 
another leather cannon going down. They just don't have the range that, say, Falconet does. And the Falconet slow push here is what uh, Pass is going to go for. Is the Hussar still out in the field? I want to I say that they are. I can't see them. So I'm going to have to say that they're not. So Passy must have lost them somewhere. Bad Passy. Terrible player losing the Hussars. Uh, the Hussars would be very nice. So I think Passy's aware that we had as many Falconets and your points backing off. He's making Culverins. Uh, Max actually sending Jaegers in as well to kind of back up the Culverins. Culverins going to try and do the Falconets where the Jaegers trying to do the Musks. Only having two Culverins is not ideal. You probably want versus all these Falcons, probably want four. So another two will be ideal. Passy's point of view, he's sending villagers now, sending villagers and training Hussars to the stable. He does have three Culverins. He's anticipating the Culverin war. Exciting times. Passy is aware of his opponent's move. And, um,. Yeah, Max, double artillery foundry. I mean, to, to be fair, you're not used to building artillery in age two, so I, I do give you that. But that's quite funny to see. <laughs> Jaeger's been trained for the barracks as well. Got to remember though, these coin mines, once they do run out of gold from the uh, twarping, then it's going to be kind of hits you right in the face. I wonder if Max ever scouts that northern top uh, gold mine. Let's see, he hasn't, and that's. Uh, it's quite hard for them to scout with only one explorer. Maybe it's something you can spare one Caroline just to make sure you haven't covered all the black space on your half of the map is a priority. Um, oh, dodge, dodging! Passy, dodging with his falconets and uh, his culverins just creeping forward. Already picking up one culverin. Yeah, this is um, this has already got quite I I un, I I not not quite ideal, quite unideal, quite terrible. Uh, very quickly here for Max's Culverin answer is going to be needing to be forcing even more Culverins since the coin he's investing into Jaegers, although Jaegers are great versus Musketeers, he needs the coin for the Culverins first to clear up the bigger problem, which is the siege. And yes, all those gold, um, all those Jaegers there, just three Jaegers, 600 coin instantly being wiped from the map for no losses there from Passy. And yeah, I think Max is. I think Max. He might just get the two culverins out just to show who's getting culverins and say, hey, I got more culverins. I can only afford this many culverins. Um, maybe the aggressive GG here, for, may, hoping for Passy to drop his guards so he can move in and clean up the entire army. But even. Yeah, that, that would be BM if that was the case. I think. I think. Max realizes that even if he did get a decent trade there with the Culverins, he's only got Culverins and the amount of musketeers behind, but Passy's got to deal with the Carolean Jaegers, uh, the Torps, the villagers have been pretty much decimated from um, Max's point of view as well. And then, not to mention, you know, strong food eco can go into uh, Hussar production, got Hussar raids ac across the map. Even <laughs> another two Falconets. Brilliant players like their Falconets recently. I've, I've noticed that a lot. You didn't often see Falconets with uh, Brit being, being made, but now it's like the go-to thing is Musk Falk. So it's been some good stuff and uh, another good quality series. I'm really enjoying this tournament. I, I'm glad I did this idea. At first, I was a bit unsure if I had time, if I'd be, you know, keen to kind of carry this through. But um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed it so far. And yes, I'm good saying good series. Gator saying GG's boys, Evolution GG, uh, Crab got saying two foundries. Oh, y you know you've done. You know you done messed up when even Crab got's calling you out for the two foundries. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Max plays other series much better. Crab, that is not the language we expect in our community. Come on, man. It's a honest mistake. We will make honest mistakes, but uh that's a, uh, a lot of population here in Falconets and it's is um I'm not gonna say it's a shame we didn't see a final fight because I think the fight would have played out how he expected it to play out. The military population in the Brit players favor, but I think more importantly, it's the eco as well. Um, one can the military can sort itself out, but the eco doesn't sort itself out, it just continues to diverge and grow, and that's where the problems were fundamentally there for the Swedish player. Let's look at the um buildings here quickly. Yeah, no, it's just if when you see Manor House, when you see Brit player building more manors than uh, the Swedish player can make torps, even you know, after having a TP to send in your 700 wood, your four torps, it's just the VC really working strong here. And, and the early pressure from Passy of going, you know, forward rack stable, forcing the artillery foundry, the three lever cannons being made, and the two levers being shipped, uh, delayed. 
Um, oh, I know you. I know. I know you're not actually flaming. Don't worry, crab. Don't worry. Just chill. Chill, man. Chill. Chill. It's okay. Um, yeah, just just forcing the response there from Sweden, slowing his own age up down. And usually, we used to see Sweden like aging up like se- like six minutes forty, seven minutes ten. But now, but they they've lost. Now, but they've they've lost the eco advantage. They have to kind of they have to make military to defend yourself because they age slower and have a slower economy that uh, allows Brits to easily kind of get the momentum um, in this middle here and carry on. Yeah, my voice is going well. My voice now is starting to go a bit croaky from the, the continuous cast in the two series, but uh, that's absolutely tolerable. Uh, it's just just coming back from sickness, I think. Um, obviously, last I haven't actually listened back to this cast. So it'd be quite interesting to see. Listen to me going. And hello, guys. Welcome back to uh, Harrison's cast. It's here to the Trash Can League. Uh, today we have uh, we have alligators for the North Atlantic Herbie Mast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad my nose is kind of cleared up in that sense. Uh, uh, that is probably that's probably what you guys probably heard as well. <laughs> Your voice is fine. Yeah, the voice is fine now. Um, but it's all good. Um, good series. So yeah. That's the end for this series between Max and Rosado. Uh, another high quality series. If you liked uh, this series, like this video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Follow the playlist. I'm adding all the casts to the playlist. You should see the playlist on your screen now, probably, if I remember to do this. And um, I'll see you for the next series in the TCL as we uh, cast more games and more games come in. So I'll see you later, guys. Thanks for watching.